Hi there guys, got a little video here for you today on a couple of outgun digital gauges. What I'm going to be doing in this video is giving you a look at the gauges, I'll be testing them, then giving you my final opinion on them. Now before we get started, I do very briefly want to mention that these two gauges here were given to me free of charge from the manufacturer, and if you want to get a set for yourself, there will be a link in the description below along with a discount code. With that all said, here are the two gauges laid out along with everything you get in the box. The gauges both come in these little metallic tins along with some nice cutout foam for protection when the gauges are in shipping. They also come with a full colour manual for each of the gauges along with a few spare o-rings and other bits and pieces. And then this gauge here uses a rechargeable lead so you get that included in the box. Now the gauges are obviously a little different, if we take a closer look at this one, this one uses a OLED screen, so as you can see there it's lit up, and it is also backlit, so the screen is perfectly readable, even in pitch black conditions. This gauge here also uses an inbuilt battery which is rechargeable using this lead here. The other gauge is slightly different in that it uses an LED screen rather than an OLED one, so this one isn't backlit. The other difference with this gauge is that it uses a replaceable battery, so if you want to replace the battery you simply need to unscrew the bezel, flick the old battery out, pop in a new one, and then you'll be good to go. The battery for reference is a CR1632. Apart from that, both gauges are 300 bar safe, and they are both IP67, which means they're pretty much waterproof. On the web store for these gauges, it does state that they can be chucked in a washing machine, turn the washing machine on, and when the gauges come out again, they'll be fully functional. But I'll be testing that later. The other thing I'll mention is that both of these gauges here use a 1 8 BSP thread on the back. Now if you're not sure on what thread your rifle has, just take a gauge off and take a quick look at the threads. So as you can see here, these ones are straight or parallel with no taper. And if we take a set of calipers, measure across the threads, they should measure about 9.6 millimeters, or roughly around there. Right then, next up we're going to be doing an accuracy test. Now before I turn all the digital gauges on, the first thing I want to do is just give you a quick look at the two analog gauges, and you can make a guess as to what the pressure is set to. So, quick look at them there, hopefully you can see that. Then we'll turn all the digital gauges on, and as you can see here, 143, 142, and then the master set one, 142.3. So the two digital gauges are well within one bar of the master set one. If I had to guess, I would say this one and this one are probably reading exactly the same. Although as this gauge uses three digits instead of the four, it's probably just doing some internal rounding. But as you can see there, the gauges are nice and stable and well within one bar of the master set one. If we take a quick look at the two analog ones, you can see that this one is fairly accurate, although it is quite difficult to read the exact pressure, as you don't have markings around the analog edge. Now I will say, this one at the end here is just a faulty gauge that I put in there for reference. I think it's been banged at some point, and it constantly reads 50 bar above the current set pressure. With that said, the last thing I want to do in this setup is just show you the refresh rate. So if I angle the block slightly, you'll get a better look at the two digital gauges. What I'm going to do now is open the bleed for this unit, and you can see how fast the gauges refresh. So as you can see there, the gauges pretty much react instantly. As you can see there, the refresh rate in the manual is stated to be about 10 times per second. So you're always going to get the correct reading on your gauges. The reason that's useful is if you have one of these gauges on your regulator, you can fire the rifle and watch what happens to the regulator. 
Does it reset at the same rate each time, or is there a bit of a lag? The only other thing I'll mention in this setup is that both of the gauges have a minimum pressure of 30 bar and a maximum pressure of 300 bar. With that said, I'm going to get these gauges off the manifold, then we're going to chuck them in some water. Alright then, up next we're going to be fully submerging the gauges in some water. This is just a bucket of water. Here are the two gauges. I'll turn them on. So that one there. Stand him up in the bottom there. And then that one there is on already. We'll stand that one up in the bottom as well. So whilst the gauges are fully submerged, I just very briefly want to explain why this is important or useful. So let's just say you have a rifle with a very slow leak that's proven difficult to find. Often the last result is to dunk test the rifle, which involves fully submerging the action into water and then carefully watching to see where bubbles emerge from. Standard analog gauges use a bleed hole in the side of the case so that if anything goes wrong with inside the gauge, air pressure doesn't build up behind the glass, it simply leaks to atmosphere through this hole here. Obviously, if we were to dunk this gauge in the water, water travel through this hole here and would probably end up damaging the dial or at the very least filling the gauge up with water, which is obviously something we want to avoid. But these gauges should be fine after being submerged in water. So what we'll do now is take them out, put some paper towel down just so I don't get water everywhere. As you can see there, we have our gauge. So I've dried everything off nicely with just some paper towel. As you can see, this gauge here is working. If we turn the other one on, as you can see there, it's working as it should. So there we have it. There's the two gauges, fully water tested. Right then, up next we're going to be installing the gauges onto a rifle. So the first thing to do is make sure that this rifle is safe to work on by first dry firing it into a nice safe backstop and removing your magazine or single shot loader if one is fitted. The next thing we need to do is degas the rifle fully. On the FX M3 that's nice and easy as it does have a removable bottle. So I'm just going to unscrew this here. Depending on your rifle you may have to fully degas the rifle via a bleed screw or something similar, but that will depend on your make and model of rifle. So with the bottle removed, you can see we have no pressure in the air tank. Although if we check one of the regulator gauges at the back here, you can see we still have reg pressure. To remove that, what I'm gonna do is just dry fire the rifle into a nice safe direction. After a few dry fires, no more air is coming out at the end of the barrel, and if we take a look at all the gauges on the rifle, they're all reading zero. The next thing we need to do is remove the gauge we need to replace. On this rifle, I'm going to be installing both of these gauges here, one on this side on the high pressure side, and then the other will be replacing the first regulator gauge, so this one here. To remove the first one, it's nice and simple, as the gauge was done up hand tight from the factory. And the sealing method on this particular rifle is an X ring in the base of the threads. I think I'm going to be installing this one here on the high pressure side. And because this is sealed with an X ring, the replacement procedure is nice and simple. We simply need to screw the new gauge in hand tight. So just about there. I have felt that the gauge is contacting the X-ring as there is a small amount of resistance as I screwed it in and I'm quite happy that's going to seal. Now you don't need to do these up super tight, especially when they're tightened onto an X-ring and if you do over tighten the gauge, it can cause the gauge to read inaccurately. So with that done, that's gauge number one installed. We'll flip the rifle up and remove the second one. This one is done up a bit tighter from the factory, so what I'm going to be doing is removing the plastic cover. Then I can bring through something like an adjustable spanner and just crack the gauge loose. As you can see, this one uses FX's proprietary seal, so that's just a brass ring with an O-ring in the middle. 
Now, unfortunately, with this gauge here, the feed for the gauge is actually in the side of the threads, so we can't use an X-ring in the base of the threads. We are going to have to use a doughty washer between the body of the rifle and the gauge. Now, when using doughty washers and electronic gauges, it is incredibly important not to over-tight the gauge onto the body of the rifle. So to get that installed, we're just going to be placing a 1 8 BSB Doughty washer on the base there and getting that tightened onto the side of the rifle. Again, just doing that hand tight. If you're very lucky, like I am, the gauge will be properly aligned, although sometimes it's not possible to align the gauges with the side of the rifle. So just be aware of that. Right then, so the rifle is now gassed back up again. If we take a look at our gauges, you can see that the first reg pressure one is reading. And on the other side, if we take a look at the other gauge, we can see that one is reading as well. So both gauges are working exactly as they should. And the installation procedure for the gauges will be the same on 90% of the other rifles out there. Just take a look at what sealing device is used and try and use that again if you can. If not, you do get a couple of sealing O-rings in the kit along with a new X-ring. Right then, up next we're going to run through some basic features of the gauges. Now the instruction manual does do a fairly good job of explaining what to do and how to do it, but it's sometimes easier if someone walks you through the process. So I'll get you a quick look at the instruction manual there. Then we'll go ahead and do it on the gauge. So the first thing we're going to be doing is turning the gauge on. That's done nice and simply by just pushing on the gauge. And as you can see there, the pressure comes up in the middle. If you want to see the battery level, just push on the gauge and hold. And as you can see there, the battery level appears. If you push and hold, you can see that you can turn the gauge off entirely by just pressing and holding. If you want to swap the units of the gauge, that's nice and easy to do. Whilst the gauge is off, just push and hold on the face there. And as you can see, it cycles through the settings. Once you reach the units you want, you simply release the button and the gauge will be set to that. So we'll do that. Go to bar, release, 139.6. Then we'll turn the gauge off. And then swap it to PSI. As you can see there, 2022. The next thing we'll do is change the display on timer. So how long the display stays on after you've touched it. To do this, all we need to do is tap the face four times. So one, two, three, four. And as you can see there, the display comes up. Then by just tapping the display, we can cycle through the options all the way from 30 seconds to 10 minutes. Once we reach the setting we want, we just let the gauge time out. And now that's set. The last thing I'll show you is just the charging lead. So this is the charging lead. It snaps on the face like so. Then you would just connect your USB port up to either a USB plug or a power bank, something similar. It will only go on one way. So if you try and install it on the wrong side, I can feel the magnets don't want me to touch the connector to the face. But when we get it around the right way, it simply snaps into position. The other gauge is a little simpler as it only reads in bar and you can't change the display off timer. To turn the gauge on, we just push the middle, as you can see there, 101 bar. To see the battery percentage, you just push and hold, and as you can see there, 80. If we continue holding, it turns the gauge off. The next thing I'll show is just replacing the battery. As you can see again in the instruction manual, it does walk you through the process nice and easily. Although again, it is sometimes easier if someone walks you through it. So the first thing I'll say is that we don't need to depressurize the rifle or remove the gauge from the side in order to change the battery. All we need to do is unscrew the bezel, put that nice and safely over to one side, and then remove the center section. If we flip this piece over, you can see we have a battery in the bottom. And then if we want to remove the battery, we can just use the included tool what we need to do is get in the side of the battery just here, then lever it out very gently. So you'd put that battery to one side, take your new one, 
and then install it just like so. So the plus symbol needs to be aligned with the top. We can just push that nice and carefully into position, being careful not to press directly onto the screen. So just nice and carefully like so. The next thing we need to do is line these pen pins up here with these pins in the top. And we can just drop the gauge into position, making sure everything keys in nicely. If we push it down, you can see that the gauge is now reading again, and we can install our bezel once again. Now you don't need to do the bezel up tight, you just simply need to lightly tighten it into position, then give the gauge about 30 seconds to a minute to properly reset. After that time you should be able to push the face and the gauge will start working again exactly as it should. So as you can see there, the functions are working as it should and if we push and hold, the gauge now turns off again. The only other thing that I'll mention about this gauge here is that it has this o-ring here between the bezel and the body of the gauge. So as you install the bezel, just make sure the o-ring itself is not damaged and isn't getting caught between the threads and the bezel or pinched between the bezel and the body. I will just pull the bezel off once again just to show you what I mean. Put the gauge to one side. And then if we look on the side here, you can just about make out this nice thin o-ring here. So just make sure that doesn't get pinched between the threads or caught up in any way. And there we have it. So after 30 seconds or a minute, the gauge is fully functioning once again. So that's pretty much it. I'll pull the gauges back off again, then I'll give you my final opinion on them. Right then, so that's a quick look at both of the gauges and a run through of their functions. For me personally, I think my favourite is this one here. The display is absolutely phenomenal and the ability to read it even in low light conditions is something that's really quite useful. As we saw in the accuracy test, both of these gauges here are nice and accurate. The batteries on them seem to last a long time, so I've had this one on test for about three weeks now. And as you can see there, the battery level hasn't really moved. With that said, if you just wanted a digital gauge to throw in the drawer and then bring out when you need to set a regulator up or need to test something on your rifle, I could definitely see you going for this one. The replaceable battery is really quite nice as you don't have to worry about the battery on this one dying if it's not being used. So no worrying about charging or anything like that. If it's flat, you just rip the old battery out, stick a new one in and you're ready to go. But with that said, that's pretty much everything from me. Again, if you want either one of these gauges here, there will be a link in the video description below, along with a discount code. On the Outgun store, you can also find the angled gauge brackets, along with a few cocking handles. With that being said, thank you very much for watching. I hope this video has been interesting or useful. I'll see you in the next one.